Welcome to the Gastro Guru at Home. I'm Jeremy Parsons, and I'm sure just like you, I'm self-isolating. When really, I would love to be having dinner with friends, cocktail parties, and wouldn't it be great to be on a beach, stand between your toes, warm breeze, palm trees. Well, that's what I'm gonna be bringing to you right now. We're gonna be doing an awesome cocktail, two great small plates you can share with friends. Just make it for yourself. And even if you are, you're never alone because you're cooking with me. So let's have some fun. First, let's start off with a cocktail like I always do. So I've got a shaker with one really big ice cube and I've got some tequila because hey, who couldn't use some beautiful tequila right now? And I'm gonna add in some blood orange. It's in season, so hopefully you can get it. And what you wanna do is just roll that, but really you can use any kind of citrus fruit you want for this beautiful cocktail called a Paloma. So I love blood oranges. I'm gonna slice this guy up. I'm just gonna add in two slices. It looks beautiful. You got the red, you got the orange. It's gorgeous in there. I'm gonna drop it in and I'm gonna shake this up. So what it's gonna do is that the alcohol is gonna mix with the citric acid and create an actual chemical reaction. And that's gonna add some great flavor and break down the essential oils on the pith and the peel. And of course I'm shaking it up with one hand because it looks cool. And I'm gonna pour this into our cocktail glass. Now the Paloma is one of my favorite cocktails and it's actually the uh, Mexican national cocktail. And it's made with sparkling grapefruit juice. But the great thing is, you know what? If you don't want to use tequila, you can also use vodka. It tastes great with bourbon, that sort of woodiness to it. And then mixes it great with the citric acid and just that bright citrus tone. And I mean, just I can smell the aromatics right now just from doing that one little shaky shake. If you like rum and cokes, do it with your lime. Pour it on top, I guarantee you'll have it like that every single time. So I'm just gonna add in some grapefruit soda in here. And I'm gonna add in just a little bit more of a fresh squeeze because I just love blood oranges. And there we go. I mean, it looks gorgeous. And add in a sturdy straw. Oh, beautiful. So I'm actually just gonna keep this here while we're cooking. So I'm gonna be making a pistachio and coconut shrimp, as well as a panko and herb crusted calamari. We're gonna do it with a spicy mango marinade. So what I always like to do is whenever I am doing marinades or dips or whatever, I like to get those going first while I'm prepping everything else. So I've got some mango nectar that I'm just gonna pour into this pan. And again, use what any kind of fresh citrus juice. If you want to use oranges, that goes great with ginger. You've got pineapple, put in some chili flakes. I'm using mango with some of my favorite chili and garlic sauce. And so it's a nice little paste. I'm going to add a little bit more. And all I'm going to do is just stick this onto my range and get it bubbling up. And so it reduces down, thickens up, and that's going to be the bath for both of our appetizers. So these are Argentinian shrimp. Uh, they're pink in color, so they're not cooked. These are all raw. So I'm just gonna shuck the last one and then I'm gonna show you some really cool tips on how to make this work. Just washing my hands to keep them clean. How many times have you washed your hands today? I bet a billion. I know, it's crazy. I haven't been this clean in my life. So I'm gonna show you a really cool trick. I've got some eggs in a champagne glass is this allows you to use actually less eggs. So the cool thing is, is we're gonna dip it in and it's gonna give a beautiful even coating on every single one. Once we've done that, we're gonna put it into our pistachio and coconut mixture. I like to use a little bit of sweet as well as natural coconut. And then I've got some pistachios in a bag. Now again, you can use peanuts, you can use walnuts, the only thing I wouldn't do is uh, don't do almonds because when you put them into a deep fryer, they wind up getting really mushy. So I've got a bunch of pistachios. I'm just gonna break them up. 
another great use for a shaker. So I've got nice and fun. I'm gonna add in my pistachio mixture into my coconut. And let's start breaking the backs of these shrimp. So insert skewer, boom, dip it in. And you see it coats perfectly. Drop it into the mixture, fold it around, give it a little squeeze, and boom, gorgeous crusted shrimp. So I'm gonna do this with all of them, and then I'm gonna pop it into the fridge so that they cool down. This helps to actually evaporate a little bit of the moisture and helps the crust and be able to adhere better to the shrimp. Here we go. Here's your calamari tube. I've already cut up a bunch, but I actually want to talk a little bit about this. So once you get your clean squid tubes, cut off the fins. And then what you want to do after you get both of these guys out, you use a slippery little sucker, is you want to go inside. And sometimes there's a little bit of cartilage inside the tube. So you want to make sure that you remove that. This guy doesn't have it right now. I'm going to slice it up into rings. Try and make them as even as possible. That way when you're cooking it, you know that they're all going to cook in a uniform manner. And really, calamari does not take that long to cook, which is great. A lot of people think that it does, and it comes out rubbery. But it constantly cooks even when you pull it out. So I've got my bowl. We're going to be dipping it into some uh, breadcrumbs and panko. Then I'm going to season up with some Montreal steak spice and some Italian um, seasoning. Really, all this is doing is giving it some more flavor and some seasoning. You can use just regular salt and pepper if you like. You can put in uh, like dried basil, chili flakes, whatever you like. But the biggest thing is make sure that you season it up and you gotta add dry ingredients. If you're using fresh ingredients, when you cook it up, it's gonna wind up burning. So you need to do the dry. I'm gonna use a little bit of that egg wash since we're dealing with seafood and seafood. A little bit more egg. Let's beat this bad boy up. We'll reserve these, just in case we have some added guests. Hope y'all know, none of them are coming right now. Okay, so let's dip this in. And that's all you need is just one good dunk, toss over the breading, and pop it down. Now you don't actually need a deep fryer for this particular recipe. You just need the depth in a pot with some uh, vegetable oil boiling and then you're ready to rock. So I'm gonna work in batches and I'm gonna pull these guys off. You can see that the uh, egg and batter have been coagulating. Good science term there. And I'm just gonna turn them. The great thing to look for is the bottom of the tail. So as soon as they look pink, they're ready to rock because the shrimp are gonna continue cooking even after you pull them out of the oil. You don't wanna overcook them. So as soon as the coating starts to look nice and brown, and you can see it just sticking on there, and you can see they are beautifully done. And then see what we're gonna do with that pineapple is they just stick right in there. And it looks awesome. Our deep fryer is set. Shrimp are looking great. I'm just gonna drop these in and you're gonna be amazed at how quickly this all cooks up. Our uh, marmalade is looking amazing in the back. So I'm just gonna drop these guys in and there we go. If you're using a deep fryer and you've got a basket, just watch to make sure that it doesn't bubble over and then we are good. So this is thickened up so nicely. I'm gonna pour this in. And there we have it guys, our little island oasis. I hope that you can just feel the breeze in the palm trees and uh, feeling the sunshine on your skin. So make sure until next time, be safe, keep cooking and stay smiling. Cheers. Mm -hmm.